So we've nearly finished with the building of this new SYF game gear. The only steps left are to chuck an LED on, which I'm going to go with white because the board's white and it'll give it that nice clinical feel. Put the power and audio cables on, so they're all quick jobs. And then we're going to install a screen. Obviously I'm going to choose the clean screen. Once we've got the screen in, that's it, that's the console built. Then we can install it in a new shell. Probably going to be a clear, I reckon again, to show off all the internals nice and clean. Math has also made a power board and an audio board. So even though I have the clean juice and the clean amp, I'm going to use his power board and audio board. So this is an awesome option. Let's jump in and get it finished, get it up and running with a clean screen. And let's enjoy this brand new game gear. Okay, so I've pre-screwed in the clean screen, just using some brackets, the same way you do on any Game Gear board. I've also pre-lengthened and cut all these wires, so you don't have to sit and watch me, you know, basically cutting and stripping wires. That's all we've done since the last video. So let's just now wire up the clean screen pins, and then connect the two power and audio cables, and finally chuck on an LED, and we should be able to get this board up and running. So I'm going to start on my ground wire, which is down here. And instead of running all the way over to a ground pad over here, we have a ground pad here. We've got a ground pad here. So I'm just going to tack this one nice and close, just so it looks a bit neater and saves a bit of wire. So that's the ground wire connected. Next up, we have the 5 volt wire. So if I just get the 5 volt wire and try and bend these into a somewhat neat path as we go. We can tidy up after, but let's just try and keep them sort of neat as we're going along. So let's pre tin the 5 volt. And connect that up. Next up we have the contrast wheel, which will now be the brightness control. We'll bring that down along. And this one will take to backlight 1, which is next to the 5 volt. I'll pre tin backlight 2, ready for the next wire as well. Uh, backlight 2 can be WH+. These two don't need to go in you know, a specific order, it's just a resistor. So this being either way won't be a problem. You could have WH+, going to either pad and WH- going to either pad. That should give us the backlight to the screen. Then we have the start, which is the start button. And that should go to BTS, I believe, which is button start. Then we have button two. And this will go to button two. So that's all for this side. So let's just try and keep these wires nice and tidy as we go. We just try and straighten them all up into a straight line and then bring them all across. And we can see the 5 volt line is a little bit long. So if we want to make that a bit neater for the run, we could just take that off and shorten the wire. And I could just solder straight through the insulation. Like so, and then just snip off the excess. And that's quite neat then now. It's not much of a mess when you do the wires the right length. Now for the other side, we will start with the pixel clock because it sits underneath where we're gonna run our wires to this clock pin. So let's just pre tin the clock pin And then run our pixel clock wire to the clock pad. And we could start down at the V-Sync and H-Sync because they're the lowest ones. So we take V-Sync first. That goes down to the rest pad.
And then as always, keep these wires nice and neat. I try and avoid running it right next to this clock because that will be a noisy clock. We don't really want to run the wire near that. Next, we'll do the H-Sync wire here. Follow the same path. And this will go to CL2, which is here, partly scraped off, but that'll stand, I presume, for maybe clear line. So we have H-Sync and V-Sync, basically. CL2 and RES in this case, which I'm not sure why it's named RES. We don't need C-Sync on the current clean screen. SMS mode, we need to wire that in. That comes down and fairly obviously goes to the SMS pin. Again, try and avoid going too close to the crystal. And these two resistors and capacitors leave a bit of vertical height under here. So you're not directly wedging onto those. They're all high speed crystal clock. Well, relatively high speed. So you don't really want to introduce noise onto the lines that pass by. Then we have the data pins. And these pins go going up, connecting to the data pins here. It goes data 2, 0, 3, 1. So our data 3 here will go to data 2. And then the next one will go to 0, and then 3, then 1. So if you just remember going up, it's 2, 0, 3, 1. So if we get this first one. Come down. That's up to ten all four of these pads while we're here. That's pin two. Now our pin two goes to pin zero. And the reason for this is simply um, different manufacturers. Mine, Ben Venn's, other ones. We simply just use different notations. Some used least significant bit. Some used high significant bit. Uh, some used the original notations on the Game Gear. Um, others, like myself, um, have just simple order down here. So it's as long as you follow um, Maths install guide for pinouts, then they should be right. This is the first time I'm following it as well, so we'll soon find out if it is right. But I'm pretty confident it is. So we'll just go with that. So we've done two, zero. This one should be three. And the final one that we have left should be one. And then the left um, goes to button up under here. So we probably should have put that in first before the others. But I didn't really pay that much attention. So if we sneak it under there and pre-tin in this pad without melting all of our wires. Let me just get this in a orientation away from the wires. And there we go. You can see majority of this time is simply uh, creating these wire legs. That's why I've done it in advance. But there's a semi-neat wired install. Uh, I'll obviously make a ribbon for this board with math. I think he's going to put me a connector somewhere. And I have over here a very hacky uh, prototype clean screen version 2. Uh, that's got connectors here, so like the LCD connector. Uh, it's got connectors here for the ribbons. So we'll have a connector flex cable like this, connecting to here, coming out and connecting to a connector on Maths board. So this will be... Um, in fact, that would mean this is a solderless install in terms of installing a clean screen onto this Math board. There would be no soldering involved uh, once you've done your own you know, if you've got a pre-built math board, you wouldn't have to solder the clean screen in whatsoever. It would all just connect. So we have that wired up. Uh, let's just connect an actual TFT.
and we have the TFT in now. Um, so there's only a couple of steps left. We want to install the LED, which again, if I was smart, I probably would have done first. Now we've got the pads right in the way, but it's easy enough to avoid. Uh, LEDs, I'm going to install a white one. Um, if this is too bright, we can change the resistor, which I'm guessing is going to be this resistor here. Uh, we've got anode, A. So these are directional. If you put them in the wrong way, it won't light up. An LED has a long and a short leg. Short leg is normally ground, the cathode. Longer leg is the positive, the anode. That's pretty much how they all work. Also on the actual lens, this one's really hard to see, but the negative side, the cathode, is usually flat as well. So the flat side is cathode. So in this case, where the A is, we want the longest leg to be inserted. So the positive, and that's presuming this A means anode. I'm pretty sure that's what it's gonna mean in this case. Pass it through, just bend one leg just to keep it in place. And now let's just solder this LED without melting all my wires. There's one leg. Once the one leg is in, I can straighten this leg back up. Now it's held in place. And solder that pin as well. Trim these nice and flush. So I think the only thing left now, before we can literally power this up, is connecting these two um, power and audio cables. The power one, um, if we look at, let's grab Math's power board, which I'm going to try and use. Uh, in fact, I'll probably, um, have I got a battery that this fits even? I'll try that in a second. I'll just work with my clean juice at the minute because I know this definitely works. Um, and I already have a battery on hand. But if we take this cable and see the two ribs, they insert into the board this way. The top side is 34 volts, which is here, and the right side is 5 volts, which is here. So that would mean going this way, it would have to go in this way, so that the 5 volts goes to 5 volts. So that would mean visually, the exposed pins here go down, not up, or more um, importantly, in case that ever changes on the assembly of uh, the ribbon, the nibs, which will never change, these two nibs always want to be on the outside of the board. So that's pushed in and held nice. So we just simply lob some solder on them pins. And just being careful not to bridge them together. That's it. And the last thing now is the audio board. I'll do the same thing again. In this case, if you're not sure, another thing you could do is get an existing board, for example, get the cable, straighten it out so that, say, the bottom wire here goes to the bottom here. So now you know it's a straight line. Hold the cable up, and you know the nibs in this case want to be on this side of the board. So if we do that for this one, here's the cable, here's the nibs. We want the nibs to be on this side of the board. So in this case, the exposed pins here want to be on the outside of the board. Just push that through the holes, double check nibs facing this side of the board. Just flip over and apply some solder to these pads. And that's that. I think we now have a, hopefully, fully functioning board. So let's give this a go. Um, again, let me just grab a clean amp and I'm going to just unplug the speaker and connect it to maths board, which I presume will fit. Yes, it does. Um, audio is that side. Connect the audio board in. And now if I get my clean juice, connect that up, we should hopefully have a working board. 
Now there's no game in at the minute, but if we turn on we should get power. And you can see we get the power light. So we're getting the power light. Let's just connect, say, Castle of Illusion. And turn over. And let's see what happens. There we go. A working SYF Game Gear board. You see our nice white LED here. And to be honest, I don't think that's overly bright. We'll know when we put it in a shell, but to me, that doesn't seem overly bright. So it's probably already got the ideal and right resistance there. Uh, this is Maths Audio Board. Sounds nice. Let's compare that, see if I can get a There's one here already. See if I can notice any difference at all. Um, other than the clean screen being a lot louder, um, can't really hear any noticeable differences in quality, I don't think. Let's have a listen again. Full volume. Yeah, so you can tell. You can tell the clean screen's louder, obviously, but in terms of quality, they both sound pretty much identical. So uh, we've got another option here for those that like um, to use, say, all SYF parts, so the board's kind of all branded the same. And I can tell you that the sound on this is definitely more than acceptable. It's nice and clean, crisp, sounds great. So. We're going to leave this board in on this build. Now let's swap the power board over. So turn on powers up so we know that's working. And let's see if this battery connector is the same as mine or not. This might be why I've got this connector. And let's just check polarity. Red to red would be that way. That's not the pin. So this isn't the same connector, um, but have I got a spare battery lying around? I have the battery when I was showing how to measure um, current draw on boards. I'm just going to cut this and solder it to it. And when you're going to do this kind of soldering, um, you would normally purposely cut, say, the black shorter than the red, so they can't easily touch when you're working. And then before we start bending this around and those wires end up touching, the battery is protected, obviously, with all the overcurrent, undercurrent, over voltage, all that good stuff inside here. So touching these together won't harm the battery. However, it will obviously drain the battery, make the wires hot, you know, stuff you don't really want to happen. So we just use electrical tape to insulate. And there's our bodge job of a battery for now, just so we can test this with the... SYF power board. Again, I've never used one of these, so this is my first time seeing this board. Be interesting to take a look at this under the thermals and see how it compares to the clean juice. But for now, we just want to see if it works. So if we turn on, yep, works just the same. So we have a cool little uh, Game Gear LiPo power board. So there's the complete build. This is now a brand new 2022 Game Gear, in essence. The only thing old on this board is the ASIC and the connector at the moment, which we will obviously be remaking soon, so we can have brand new connectors. The board is awesome. Um, I like the fact that we're also getting some color options as well, it looks. So we'll have these in blue, purple, different things. Again, I'm working with Math to stock all these in the store, so you'll be able to buy these from Retro6 directly. Uh, I'll be buying in huge volume and selling at very low margins as I always do and I can definitely recommend these from what I've seen so far. I've only just installed it and turned it on right now this is the first time I've even seen this but so far board is nice and cool, audio sounds nice and crisp and the quality of this board 
seems absolutely perfect. So I'm happy to recommend these to our customers. And we will probably, or most definitely, start using these once I've got the connector made so that we can just hot swap over components. It means customers get brand new boards, nice clean button pads, all reliable parts. So like resistors, capacitors, RAM, don't start failing because they're old and abused. You can have more confidence in your game gear lasting a very long time. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this being built from scratch and how easy this is. There are a few steps at the moment, and yes, it is a little bit out of reach for some people, mainly, I think, because of the cartridge connector and hot air gun. So it's not a run-of-the-mill kind of drop-in mod yet. But if you'd maybe like to see me, as well as building the cartridge connector, maybe get these ASICs mass removed and installed by our PCB factory, so you can buy a completed board, and then you can just use that to drop in whatever screen mod you like. Or I can even take it further and build an entire board that has everything built in, including the clean screen already. So you can just buy a finished Game Gear PCB with a clean screen already baked into the system. And all you have to do is drop it in a shell. There's so many options where we can go. But I love the fact that this has been made. It's certainly the main console, I would say, that needed this. Game Gears are really bad for corrosion on circuits. So there's many instances where simply replacing these components is going to be better than simply chucking away a game gear that would never be recoverable again if you want to see me review say the power board from math take a look at it under the thermals put it through some stress tests see how it holds up i'm confident looking at this this thing is going to be robust and handle everything we chuck at it but maybe you're interested in a technical dive on that or some other products if you enjoyed seeing me review products and build them just let me know and i'm happy to do more so that's it for this one, and I'll catch you in the next.